My name is Max. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the best movies released from 2014 to 2023. As exceptional as Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is, we're only focusing on live-action films. I wish I could shield you from the knowledge that you did what you did, but your sister is dead! Number 20, Oppenheimer. Well, the purpose of this institute is to provide a haven for independent minds. That's you. You are the man for the job. One half of 2023's most celebrated movie meme, Oppenheimer surprised many prognosticators with its almost billion-dollar gross worldwide. At three hours long and without a lot of conventional action, it might not have seemed like an obvious blockbuster. But that's what Christopher Nolan does. He makes great movies that usually make a whole lot of money. His biographical drama about the life of J. Robert Oppenheimer is exactly that. In fact, the AV Club called it Nolan's best movie yet, which if you look at his impressive filmography is no easy feat. It worked. Number 19, Whiplash. Not quite my temple. And now we go from a movie with a $100 million budget about the man who built the atomic bomb to a film with a $3.3 million budget about an aspiring drummer and his emotionally sadistic band conductor. Whiplash is a much smaller film, but in a way, it's no less explosive. The intense psychological battle between teacher and student brings a true intensity to every frame. The performances of Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons, the latter of whom won the Oscar, play off each other like two master jazz musicians in tune and on tempo. There are no two words in the English language more harmful than good job. Number 18, The Batman. He's with me, officer. Are you kidding me, sir? You gonna let him in here? There have been plenty of Batman movies made over the last 35 years. A number of them rank among the best superhero movies ever. So did we honestly need another one in 2022? Technically no, but who are we to complain when the result is another triumph? This tale of the caped crusader came from a slightly different angle, taking a film noir slash detective movie approach to the story and the character of the Batman. Director Matt Reeves made this film his own, showing that there are still many fresh places to take this iconic character. I'm not safe here. I can take care of myself. Number 17, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. I'm doing everything I can to track him down. I don't think those billboards is very fair. Frances McDormand stars as Mildred Hayes, a woman who lost her daughter to a violent crime. When the investigation into her daughter's case goes nowhere, Mildred rents three billboards in town to encourage the police chief into action. This darkly comic crime drama was one of the surprise hits of 2017, grossing over $162 million. In addition to critical acclaim, the film garnered multiple Oscar nominations, including a win for McDormand's riveting lead performance. Director Martin McDonough returned to the Best Picture conversation five years later with The Banshees of Inna Sharon, but Three Billboards may be his rawest and most challenging film to date. And I know you're gonna wince when I say this, but what you need to become a detective is love. Number 16, Birdman. You're no actor, you're a celebrity. Let's be clear on that. I'm gonna kill you, play. What was the best film of 2014? The Academy said Birdman, and we're inclined to agree. Alejandro Iñárritu's single-shot masterpiece is, as one reviewer put it, quote, a film about acting, identity, transformation, and the mysterious effects of superheroes. Speaking of costumed vigilantes, Michael Keaton goes from playing arguably the definitive Batman to giving the performance of a lifetime as Riggin Thompson, an actor looking to be taken more seriously following his superhero heyday. Along with the Best Picture win, the film's direction, writing, and cinematography also took home Oscars. It's not important, okay? You're not important. Get used to it. Number 15, Dune Part 1. Your grandfather said, a great man doesn't seek to lead. He's called to it, and he answers. Opinions of David Lynch's Dune are mixed, leaning towards negative. 
and even Lynch himself has distanced himself from the film. However, almost 40 years later, director Denis Villeneuve took his shot at the story and made one of the best films in recent memory. The scope of the book on which the film is based could be intimidating, but Villeneuve was able to keep it under control and not lose the audience in the vastness of the narrative. It also helps that Villeneuve's Dune was conceived as the first part of a two-film project. Despite only being the beginning of Paul Atreides' journey, few modern films are grander in scale, ambition, or storytelling. I said I would not harm them, and I shall not. But Arrakis is Arrakis, and the desert takes the weak. Number 14, Black Panther. Okay, is this Wakanda? No, it's Kansas. A lot of superhero movies have been released since 2014, but only a handful of them were influential enough to be considered for this list. Black Panther was one of those handful. It took the MCU nearly a decade to produce a film with a primarily black cast. Anyone who thought Black Panther wouldn't reach Marvel's usual levels of success couldn't have been more wrong. Not only did Black Panther make over $1 billion, it also earned unprecedented levels of acclaim for the MCU. This extended to the Oscars, where it became the first comic book superhero movie to be nominated for Best Picture. This was sadly Chadwick Boseman's only opportunity to take center stage as T'Challa. Few things last forever, but Wakanda will. Wakanda will no longer watch from the shadows. We cannot. We must not. Number 13, Roma. Siempre estamos solas. Next up is director Alfonso Cuaron's beautiful semi-autobiographical look at life in the Colonia Roma neighborhood of Mexico City in the early 1970s. Seen through the eyes of an indigenous maid working in the house of a doctor and his family, Roma is intimate, reflective, and perhaps Cuaron's most personal film to date. The story may be simple, but the outcome couldn't be more profound. Shot in beautiful black and white, Roma took home the top prize at the Venice Film Festival and the BAFTAs, winning Best Foreign Language Film at the Oscars, while also being nominated for Best Picture. <laughs> Number 12, The Shape of Water. He sees me for what I am. The Shape of Water is a romantic fantasy film set in 1960s Baltimore about a woman who communicates only through sign language who falls in love with a captured humanoid amphibian being held in a secret government lab. Sure, it sounds weird, and it most definitely could have gone off the rails so many times. But in the hands of the great Guillermo del Toro, finds its heart and soul in the originality, the fantasy, and the powerful emotions. Del Toro draws the audience in with deep feelings and honest characters, making us believe this utterly unbelievable love story. If I told you about her, what would I say? That they lived happily ever after? I believe they did. Number 11, Licorice Pizza. How old are you? You're not supposed to ask that. You're not supposed to ask a girl how old she is. Annoying. You're right. It doesn't matter to me. Set against a 1970s backdrop, Paul Thomas Anderson's 2021 comedy drama didn't open to the biggest box office numbers. Licorice Pizza is the definition of a cult classic in the making, however. Not only is this one of Anderson's funniest and most atmospheric films yet, but it contains one of the most layered relationships between Cooper Hoffman's Gary and Alana Hyam's Alana. One's 15 and has his life all figured out. The other is 25 and meandering through life. There are a dozen reasons why their relationship shouldn't work, and yet we find ourselves rooting for these two kids all the way to the rousing finish. Audiences are still discovering Licorice Pizza, but it thankfully didn't take critics or the Academy long. Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear someone breathing. Number 10, Avengers Endgame. You disgust me. But that doesn't mean you're useless. In Avengers Infinity War, Thanos destroyed half of all life in the universe. In Avengers Endgame, the good guys team up again to reverse his actions. They're both great movies, but when it came to selecting one for our list, it had to be Endgame. Technically, Spider-Man Far From Home was the final film in Phase 3 of the MCU, but Endgame was truly the climax that Marvel had been building to. And to paraphrase Fifth Harmony, it was worth it. Even with the first-rate special effects and larger-than-life action, the film never loses the characters and honors our emotional connection to them. Avengers! Assemble. Number 9, 
Top Gun Maverick. You see me now? Come on, let's get it over with. Fight on! Fans of the first Top Gun from 1986 were beyond excited and nervous when they heard the long-awaited sequel was finally getting made. Excited because it would mean more jets, air action, and of course, more Tom Cruise. Over 30 years later, though, would it be able to capture the excitement and energy of the first one? The answer was a resounding yes. Top Gun Maverick not only had even better in-air action than the first one, but it was a surprisingly thoughtful film about redemption and making the most of the time you still have. This one was a runaway hit with both audiences and critics, raking in over $1.4 billion and earning an Oscar nomination for Best Picture. Thank you for saving my life. That's what my dad would have done. Number 8. Arrival Days that define your story beyond your life. Like the day they arrived. Needless to say, Denis Villeneuve had a pretty good decade. His thoughtful sci-fi drama Arrival follows a linguistics professor attempting to figure out how to communicate with recently arrived alien spacecraft before a war breaks out. Rather than relying on big action and explosions like so many alien movies do, Villeneuve gives us a smart, completely engaging film about connecting. It got Oscar voters talking as well, picking up nominations in multiple categories, including Best Picture, Director, Adapted Screenplay, and Cinematography. Language is the foundation of civilization. It's the glue that holds the people together. It's the first weapon drawn in the conflict. Number 7. Triple R Triple R stands for Rudram Ranam Ruhiram. But given the quality of the film, they could just as easily stand for really, really, really good. Because that's what this film is. Triple R is an epic period action drama about the battle of two Indian revolutionaries against British rule in the 1920s. At over three hours, the film is definitely one of the longer films you're going to see this decade. But oh, is it worth it? Action, adventure, and did we mention the dancing yet? The visuals are big and bold. But the tale of brotherhood at the heart of Triple R is what gets us pumped above all else. Number six, get out. Do they know I'm? Do they know I'm black? No. Should they? Today, we all know that Jordan Peele is one of the great psychological horror filmmakers working in Hollywood. But back in 2017, very few of us would have guessed that one half of the sketch comedy duo Key and Peele would make one of the best horror films of the 21st century, in a genre where we thought we'd seen it all. It turns out we hadn't. Peele's film is social commentary, satire, and horror. It's a film as funny as it is scary, blending the two in ways that make for an experience unlike any other. By the way, I, I would have voted for Obama for a third term if I could. Best president in my lifetime, hands down. Number five, Moonlight. I'm sorry. What you gotta be sorry for? The film might be remembered as part of the Best Picture announcement mistake at the 89th Academy Awards ceremony. What we hope no one ever forgets is how wonderful Moonlight is, and completely deserving of its Oscar win, even if it was the second film announced that night. Both black and sexual identities are explored by writer-director Barry Jenkins. This lgbtq themed coming-of-age movie brings to the big screen characters rarely given this kind of loving, thoughtful, and forward-facing treatment. Along with its Best Picture Oscar, Moonlight also held the top spot on numerous best of the year lists. Remember the last time I saw you? For a long time, try not to remember. Number four, Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! In 2015, we aren't sure how many moviegoers were even aware of the first Mad Max movie, released back in 1979. Regardless of whether or not you've seen that one or the two sequels that followed in the 1980s, Mad Max Fury Road is well worth your while. We could get into the film's narrative, but the whole post-apocalyptic story is secondary to the action. The film puts all its eggs in one basket. The basket being the chase through the desert landscape which comprises the vast majority of the movie. It is a bold move, and it pays off big time. The energy is palpable, and the stunts, 90% of which were done practically, are incredible. At least that way, you know, we might be able to... together. 
come across some kind of redemption. Number three, Hereditary. Listen to me, Steve. I know you don't trust me, and there is nothing I can do about that. But they put a curse on us when we brought Charlie back. We made a pact with something. In case you thought that smart, thought-provoking horror films had gone away since the heyday of classics like The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby, the past decade has shown otherwise. Amazingly, Get Out and Hereditary were both feature film directorial debuts. With Hereditary, Ari Aster shows a directorial mastery beyond his years. He isn't without seasoned talent to work with. Tony Collette is a revelation as Annie Graham, a grieving mother spiraling into madness, and not just of the psychological variety. The fact that Collette wasn't nominated for Best Actress might be the snub of the decade, but Hereditary will persist for generations. I just don't want to put any more stress on my family. I'm not even really sure if they could, could give me that support. Number two, everything, everywhere, all at once. What is this you want me to I totally stay low and out of sight. A mix of genres and film styles, Everything Everywhere All at Once is an experience that cannot be described, but instead must be seen to truly be appreciated. IndieWire described it as a, quote, orgiastic work of slap-happy genius, and we could not have said it better ourselves. The film was a surprise hit, beyond the $141 million box office, on a between $14 and $25 million budget. It won seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actress, and Best Screenplay. In fact, the film seemed to win every accolade everywhere all at once, taking home a whopping 266 awards out of 405 nominations. I want to tell you, if you have a chance, I will always choose you with you. I'm going to start a little bit. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. West Side Story, Steven Spielberg's take on the Jets and the Sharks, not Jaws. Barbie, the movie that put the barb in Barbenheimer. Wow. You can go now. The Grand Budapest Hotel, a grand success with audiences and critics alike. Mr. Gustav also delivered a nightly sermon. Rudeness is merely the expression of fear. People fear they won't get what they want. The most dreadful and unattractive person only needs to be loved, and they will open up like a flower. What We Do in the Shadows, the vampire horror comedy mockumentary we didn't know we needed. Thank you. Get dressed. I don't know if I feel up to it, really. You don't look that great, but if you eat someone on the way I'm and fine. rejuvenate just, a little bit... You could probably wear a mask or something. Just leave me to do my dark bidding on the internet. What are you bidding on? I'm bidding on the table. Coda, the little movie that brought a streamer best picture. I'm meditating. Two minutes to go. Okay. Do you want me to wait? Oh, or I'm okay. just coming back? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Parasite. Using literal staircases, director Pong Joon-ho explores class structure and social and economic disparity in modern-day South Korea in this brilliant black comedy thriller. While taking first place on our list is obviously Parasite's most impressive accomplishment, the film did reach a few other milestones worth mentioning. After premiering at the Cannes Film Festival, it became the first Korean film to win the coveted Palme d'Or. Then, almost a year later, it became the first non-English language film to ever take home the Oscar for Best Picture. Number 2. 
Can you see any glaring omissions from our list? Let us know in the comments. Answer! Russian. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.